I think what we, we needed to deal with the crisis uh, during that time, and for us to be able to clear the, the queue that was there of uh, trucks, uh, because most of our people did not listen to the call that we've made that before you decide to travel, you must have done and, and produced at the border post uh, results that are not older than 72 hours. So most of the commuters came without those results and we were forced to use our mobile laboratory services, which was there stationed just for those in case, maybe let's say your results have now expired in 72 hours. But instead, that services was now meant to be testing everyone. That's what caused the problem. So for us to be able to clear, we then uh, be able guided by the National Department of Health, allow them to pass through and we clear that. But we are saying the major problem is when they come back, which they will be starting. And that becomes, of course, our concern as the provincial government. So no one must be able to enter South Africa without valid results. And it's happening all over the, the world. And I don't know why should we be blamed as South African governments to be implementing uh, what we think will be best for our own uh, country and our people. So we are expecting uh, thousands uh, uh, a day because on average in a day, when you count individuals, it's almost on average around 8,000 that crosses that, that post when I look at the statistics. So we are expecting each and every one to have done the test wherever they reside and produce their tests at the border post. If for any case, your, your results expired, maybe while you were waiting on the other side of Zimbabwe, and then they are, they are they have expired, you show us the expired test results, we'll be able to provide you with that particular test. And if people can comply and cooperate with us, we are not going to see ourselves with this uh, challenge that we saw previously. We saw those challenges because people were not cooperating. Mm. Now, will this plan remain in place beyond the current travel period? And the second question, I suppose, is, is it sufficient to show the results just purely on a person's cell phone, or do you require a printout? We, 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 we are requiring all, all uh, valid documentations that we have. Remember, when we talk about screening of COVID-19, we are not only looking at you would have done that questionnaire to screen yourself. We are also looking at the valid laboratory test results that are there. So we have got our community healthcare workers there working together with our environmental healthcare practitioners from Court Health. And I also want to believe that we will also, like we did uh, around March, where we were augmented by the military healthcare services, they will also be coming on board. So the whole entire team of healthcare workers from different sectors in, 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 in government, they will be at that uh, border post where in, we'll start by screening you, the screening of temperature still continue, screening you for symptoms of COVID-19 still continue. But on top of it, we are still going to be asking you for valid results that we're going to look at. If should there be any, uh, because the, we will be having professional nurses. If we doubt or we want to satisfy ourselves, we will be having different stations of laboratory testing this time around we're going to beat them up we will not only be having the two stations like we did previously which we can't be blamed because previously what we did over christmas was to provide for those who are leaving the country who might be having those challenges for the results that's why we can't take the entire laboratory of the country and put it at one border post we still need to do tests inland we still need our own people who are in the country who require those services so we will provide that backup system in case your results have expired. Uh, but it's not only dependent on your results because we have already received tips that there are people who are forging results uh, for COVID-19 and selling them uh, on the street, but they must be warned that we are going to be requiring valid results and we have system to get detect whether we need to repeat the test or not. You can buy the test results we will go and retest you. And if we find that you are positive, remember, we're not going to allow you to pass through. You will have to go back because that's what is happening. You must go back. If we test you uh, when, when you are already here in the country, 
uh, by whatever means and you are positive, you should be able to provide your own uh, resources to quarantine. So it's not going to be easy this time around. I, I must indicate to the people of South Africa because when I look at the statistics of those that we tested, if you look at those that were exiting uh, the border, we 15 tested positive, those who were leaving. But because you are leaving, we, we can't stop you. You, you, you will be stopped uh, if, if, if on the other side. But we will advise you to go for quarantine. But people have been taking us to court for that. But those who were coming into the country, 33 were found to be positive. If you look at this total number, it tells you that more people who are coming to South Africa are the ones who are positive. And what is also interesting is that at that total number of 46 of positives that we had, only one is a South African citizen. But believe me, you can hear that the whole world is blaming <laughs> us uh, for whatever variant or anything that is happening. No one wants to look at the real fact. Probably, I always say it's because as South Africans, we are a very nice and a very good nation. But this time around, we, we, we are taking this variant very serious. We have seen uh, our people are dying, our beds in our different hospitals are full. So if you don't have results, don't come uh, through our borders. Uh, stay where you are. If you have results and they are negative, come, we will welcome you. Let me see, let's talk a little bit about the culprits that are selling uh, negative COVID results. Do you have a plan in place for them? Are you dealing with this? I think, as, like, as I've indicated, that this is some of the tip-offs that we got. We have reported them to the relevant authorities. They will be working on uh, how to deal with that. And they will definitely come up with a system. I was just uh, highlighting and warning those who are planning to buy those test results that at the end of the day, you might be the biggest loser. Look, here we are talking about uh, health, your health. You can't rob your, yourself. It's about your own health. If you're positive, you have to isolate yourself because being positive, you can anytime change your condition. We've seen people just starting symptoms today, the following day they demise. This is how dangerous the current variant we're dealing with as compared to when we were dealing with the first wave. So you're also not assisting. From me, from a public health perspective, it will be better for you and for everybody that don't lie to yourself for whatever. There's no reason that must convince you to lie to yourself because you think you are lying to us, but you are not doing yourself a favor. And you're also a danger to the society because you'll be continuing spreading the virus, knowing very well that you've got the virus. Whereas if you stay home, isolate yourself, you can still travel at a later stage. Now, obviously you mentioned a lot of challenges that you've experienced over the last uh, few days. What are some of the lessons that you've learned from this period, doctor? Uh, the, the lessons are, are very clear, which I was also discussing with uh, the, the National Department of Health uh, Directorate for, for uh, Port Health, that, yes, we, we made uh, uh, policies and regulations, and we tend to be lenient. And we always provide alternatives. Because, for instance, when we said, you are not going to pass through our border post without results, and people come without results. We then develop plan B for them to say, let's put a laboratory a service for them to be tested. Then that becomes a problem because they then tell each other that don't worry, even if you don't have results, you are not, you are not going to be chased away. They will test you and you will get valid results. So we must stop doing that. As government, when we say this must happen, it must be done in that way. And of course, in terms of our planning, to say why Port Health is a national competency and a number of departments, especially the border management at the, at, at the, the, the Port Health and also a border management in general, it's being uh, managed by Home Affairs, which you will know that provincial government does not have that particular competency. Uh, you have departments, uh, South African police services, and a number of SARS and all those. As provincial government, the lessons that learned is that we must be actively involved in terms of the planning and in terms of the preparedness so that we can be supporting our principals who are national because we are there 
at the provincial level where the border post is housed. So leaving the matter to be dealt with at national can backfire in this in this fashion. So we because sometimes your officials can just tell you all it's well. It, it's better as political heads in the provincial government to be there and monitor and give feedback to our own uh, political principals out up there who are our ministers. And we believe that moving forward, uh, doing that, making sure we implement what we decide on, what we plan on, and make sure that we involve those who are hands-on, uh, it will definitely be able to, to reduce the the challenges that we have seen. Because you, you might have seen that because of the frustrations that were all there, even the media houses were reporting that there are so many people who have died in that particular uh, port, port health. But as a provincial government, when we look, we realize that indeed there is nothing uh, of that nature uh, that is surprisingly, when you look at the statistics of those that really uh, died, eight of those uh, from the 14th, uh, of December up to to date, and when we also further look at those tra truck drivers, for where we are sitting, it's only one truck driver, and we, we realize those who died of unnatural it causes who require postmortems. There are three who we have conducted postmortems, and there all all these other ones. They there were patients in their own, unknown patients with chronic ailments. Some of them you know that they cross. Uh, the, the, the border just to come and seek health care in the province. And this thing has been happening throughout the year that they will cross the border to come and collect medication. Some of them died before they even reached Musina Hospital or any of our clinics around that side. So so these are the things that if we we, we plan carefully and, and, and communicate better, we could be able to avoid.